interesting as we start this fine morning. We've got a pair of cockatoos just, uh, sorry, kookaburras just up there and they're just about to have a laugh. The Lord is with us. My pup, born on the 5th of March, weighed in at 24 kilos the other day. He's not even three and a half months old and he's bigger than my bull terrier. His days of being in the tractor are just about done. I reckon like, he's still not heavy, I could still lift him, but just look, look at the bloody size of him. He's, he's actually taller than Tank already. Anyway, um, our good Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father and Holy Spirit, Look, there's been, I was saying like an epiphany unfolding, but just, I've been living through something recently, and it's been not the best of experiences, but it's been an ongoing psychological conundrum where, you know, like you're pulling off the onion layers to get to the deeper cause of, you know, the cause and effect of understanding, like, what's really going on. And so, like, and fundamentally, I thought it was just materialism, and it is like that's definitely an issue. But um, you know, they say like there is nothing new under the sun. Well, you know, essentially, as much as I don't want to like bust your bubble, but annually we're going to keep going around the same lessons because we're just going through the same seasons and the same cycles. Now, God can change the season. It is up to us to break the cycle. Right? Now, I, I, I say rightfully or wrongfully, is there a cycle that myself personally am trying to break or is there something that I'm still trying to understand? Uh, yes, no and amen. Look, there is something that keeps coming around annually that... I am needing to comprehend and it's just funny how it works in with the seasons and um yeah it always comes about in the southern hemisphere right at the base of the equinox anyway it is what it is it's just like you know the bottom of winter there is a part there's an aspect that must die within anyway so I feel like new levels new devils new season um demands a new you and we're in a really bizarre situation at the moment because life keeps getting harder come on and the last thing you know you really want to fall into is not just so much another day another disappointment but like is really is life really just dog eat dog and is it cutthroat? And I'm starting to see an experience where at present, and maybe it's just the height of the destruction of the 3D matrix at the moment, which is causing it. But at the moment, there is a massive height of disrespect, violence, and a need for dominance in territorial pissings. And it's the territorial pissings, come on, that I want to solely focus on today come on my bull terrier has been struggling with it demonstrably lately and um he's living in grace because if he was with anyone else he would have been put down already but i'm willing to see what comes out of this because i feel like he's in his own evolutionary journey and I'm about as alpha as it gets, and honestly, if I can't withstand him, I may as well just give up dogs. So I'm just, there's a few teething problems at the moment with him, which, you know, I don't think the weather was helping, but also, um, I've got my other pup, and he's genuinely had jealousy issues, as it is anyway, my uh, bull terrier tank. Uh, I feel like understanding is the greatest key to break chains linchpins remove issues get to you know, greater levels of objective reasoning you know. and the more objective we become 
the more emotionally detached we become, the better our life is in general. So we're going to let this one roll out. It could be a 40 or a 50 minute video. It is what it is. And I just want to, before we get into it, because it's a smash up and this video, I'm going to call this one a part of the survival guide for anyone that comes across it because you will want to know about what I'm about to talk about. Because I am a kind-hearted, gentle-natured human and I have found myself around very territorial people. I just didn't realise how bad it was because the problem is that's not in my nature. And I want to cover that to cover the bigger picture to actually understand the conundrum to actually you know stumbling blocks just pretty much why do people do what they do but why are we not territorial because this is that's what it's actually been all about and you don't want to fall into it so in the stock market uh, there's this thing called revenge thinking and the negative impact of revenge thinking right so when someone has lost their mind they have become senseless and it explains the fundamental core of envious and jealous behavior and the notion of being a sore loser. They're out of control and using revengeful tactics to try and regain it. So without being in control, as they have lost that sense of control, they want to have control of their own little reality, they will do whatever it takes to regain it for better or worse, for richer or poorer. And for us, followers of our good Lord Jesus Christ we've ended up with a conundrum Superman said it best in the movie Man of Steel he was just like when he went to the church and he had to speak to the pastor because even Superman needs God um, he went he's like I'm the one they're looking for and then, obviously, the, pre the, the reverend was like, well, um, what are you going to do? Superman goes, oh, well, you know, I could hand myself over, but, like, can they be trusted? And then, I think, I can't remember what the reverend said specifically, but I think the synoptic crux which Superman was dealing with was, I don't think humans can be. And this little conundrum just here, anyone that is a follower of Christ understands it because honest to goodness I think most of us would be award winners in finding poetic words to explain how mediocre life is because we have copped it with the spiritual warfare with the attacks just with just the bleak mundaneness of existence itself and like I don't want to be too pessimistically skeptical about that stuff because the long and short of it is when the Lord says the promised land, yeah. at such a young age, I'm sitting in the most centralized point in all of Australian economics. Let that sink in at such a young age. The Lord knows how to bless. Anyway, and I am struggling with the mediocrity. So I don't know how you're going, but it's, it's tough. Anyway, so even Superman was like, well... I don't know if humans can be trusted. Great. We're back to revenge thinking. That's it. I didn't finish reading. Now, with the revenge thinking, um, the person then begins to feel as though life itself owes them something. That's the need for the revenge, you know, an exacting. The reality is that it does not... Winning and losing is never personal. It is simply feedback based upon your actions. And we're talking about the meaning of life. Yeah, third dimension is based upon objectivity. And when we believe life owes us something, we are looking for exactings because we've fallen into dark and light, black and white, good and evil, good and bad. And we're trying to find a level playing field. It's like um, walking a tightrope. So, yeah, in Christ there is no condemnation. That's the way we remove the tightrope and find equilibrium once more. Anyway, it's another conversation for another day in regards to another topic. But, um, so this revenge thinking and 
what I've been walking through recently. So the one I've been walking through recently, um, the surface level of it, and I'd been sitting on it for a couple of years, it was clearly evident excuses, neglect, hypocrisy, sabotage. Um, and then you would say, well, it's, it's materialism. And yeah, I'm not trying to say you're trying to wrap shit up into a nutshell, just, you keep coming around full circle, keep coming around full circle, keep coming around full circle. Now, yeah, I didn't know that I had an enemy. I didn't know that I had enemies. And the problem is with them is um, they'll keep that mask on and um, they'll piss in your pocket and tell you it's raining until, fortunately or un, it falls off because they can't keep it up forever, but they're not that psychologically intelligent they don't have emotional intelligence and all of a sudden once they start to feel like they're out of their depths they will attack you at some point um, anyone that attacks you at some point is competitive and the long and short of it is the moment they've attacked you they have lost their competitive advantage because what they have just said to you is that you are officially a threat to them so Let's, before we get into territorial pissings, um, let's talk about why is, I'm not even going to say Christians, I hate that because I hate most Christians, you know, I hate to say it, why as followers of the ways of our good Lord Jesus Christ, he who embodied the integrity that our heavenly father is asking for us to walk in to be able to enter the gates all right i am the way the truth the life no one comes to the father but through me a part of that is to walk the walk and talk the talk of how you know, christ walked and talked yeah yes when we mean yes no when we mean no integrity equals credibility these are big things here because these are business fundamentals as well. I mean, if anyone had actually picked up upon the behaviours and the actions of the way Jesus presented himself in life, he was a very good business person and, um, you know, he walked his way into being a king anyway because he had the fundamental attributes of what it took to be at the top of his game and the, the top of a people. He embodied leadership interesting stuff anyway back to it so recently even Elon Musk said it he's going to hell and there's plenty going there with him uh, it doesn't matter how rich you are you're going to hell you can't buy yourself out of it it is only through Jesus Christ that um you have salvation and it's through bending the old knees and you know, actually submitting and it's through that submission which this conundrum that I'm about to get on to sits right so i am personally involved in it's probably a little bit rude to be sort of getting into it but let's just say it swings they were looking to bolst an economy out of it from the downfall of the pandemic personally involved in it um we're not just talking a few small million we're talking hundreds of even into the billions we're talking really big stuff right now even with that with new levels new devils um my core fundamental belief that i have instilled and this is what i would like you to comprehend this is so pivotal to understanding all this bullshit that you're suffering um look I apologize for swearing, but the Lord accepts it because I've got integrity. It's just me expressing my feelings so that I can comprehend what it is I need to know because there are lots of things to be disappointed about and if you don't express it, it builds up and you end up having explosions and implosions. So we have a very, you know, like a lingual dexterity, obviously. I am being lazy and I do have quite an intelligent palate and I can pull all the words out that are needed in order to be able to express perfectly how it is that I'm feeling in regards to know what's going on in a particular situation. But the long and short of it is, I choose to be laid back. 
back to it. When we bend the knee, see, all Jesus people, all hard dwellers, all Christians, genuine, decent Christians, we own nothing. God owns everything. The Holy Spirit is the king of all everything, owns the lot. Um, very rich, the Holy Spirit, you know, everything. So as God works on the hearts of people to come and bless us, God owns what that person has. God owns what the person has beyond the person, beyond the person, because God owns everything. God is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. God is the all and everything. And um, so I think we're pretty well clued into the fact that, well, if God owns everything, we're simply stewards. And it doesn't matter whether or not we've written contracts for ownership or if we are there for you know, caretaking, we are there as guardians of God's assets. And then if I have children, they will be guardians of God's assets. And if they have children, guardians of God's assets. We are only ever guardians of God's assets and we are only ever where we are at because God has us on assignment. That is a huge revelation to grab. Because when we recognize that we are guardians on God's assignments, we then recognize that if we have land, whether that be one acre or 10,000 acres, we are the shepherd that the Lord has placed over that acreage. And anything inside of that, we are the guardian of it. We are the exception of the rule. We do not get involved in territorial quabbles as we are not a part of any territory. We are simply looking after God's territory. So when, as followers of Christ and guardians of the Holy Spirit's assets, we start getting attacked by people that have made us their enemies, what's really going on is, is they have pissed on that land and marked their territory whether they own it or not. And the problem with pissing, territorial pissings, is it leads to dog eat dog, because it's about the top dog. And then all of a sudden, you start to recognize, you know, the stumbling blocks and the jealousy and the vindictiveness and the manipulative behavior and the greed. And just that same old mediocre, boring garbage that you may have to put up with every day until you understand what it is you need to understand, all right? Now, this one's been played out pretty heavily in my life recently, and um, what those who were doing it didn't bank on is that um, I have the relationships that I have and I can be transparent. So everything's been transparent, and it's all above board. And so what they're now left with is if anything blows out, they have to, beyond making up excuses, give their reasons for why they do what they do and did what they did. Because, um, you know, it is what it is, but I got thrown under the bus recently for no particular reason. And I was trying to grab it, trying to grab it, and I was like, like, for me, it's just like, do you want to know what I hate about rural communities? Rural people. You know, that's what ruins them, to be honest with you. So communities buggered, anyway. But then it's not that. It's a particular person. So we're going back to territorial pissings. Oh, so Jesus is with us now. See that little feather? It just dropped down. So we've got the angels, Jesus. Oh, a little ram who decided to pick it up. So we're on to something here. The, the Lord is blessing this video, right? So it might be viewed in five years' time or ten years' time. I think I'm here 50 years too early, 50 years too late. But, so we need to come back to some obje objectivity here. This is for the followers of Christ. Do not doubt it for a moment. Right. Um, territorial pissings. 
I came here to guard the Holy Spirit's assets. See, why would I be territorial over anything if I'm here as a guardian? I'm here to serve and protect. What you will also find, I'm going to drop nuggets here on there. One day, you're going to ask the question, why does martial arts feel more relevant to my life than what I can see within the Bible at this moment? You ready for it? Self-defense. You know? <laughs> Let's continue. All right. So, in regards to rural people ruining rural communities, and we're trying to go in deeper to comprehend the larger issue of what's going on, because there is a problem. Um, it was an individual in particular that was doing it, and fortunately or un for themselves, they unmasked that they are a covert narcissist. And, um, oh, Ram, he don't eat guts. Drop it. Drop it now. Put it down now. Get it out of your mouth. Come on. Don't really need three-month-old pups eating guts, especially when they sleep inside. Come on. Now, um, after the unmasking of being a covert narcissist, I then came to understand that my last six months, I've had someone standing behind me with a whip up my ass and unknowingly at the time because unfortunately for them I was their judgment come on um, and with that what do I mean by that um, I wouldn't be the first person they've done it to and I don't think they were expecting me to perform the way that I performed and I didn't just like perform I went over and beyond and um, conquered everything so um, with the main stakeholder in all of this, I've had about four conversations around what was going on because I just couldn't quite understand it. And I was like, there's a problem here because the main stakeholder blessed me with the biggest job of my life, right? And this individual decided to sit in there and gatekeep it. But the problem is that job I had worked that last six months before it and it was the keys to a block of land that God gifted to me. So they get in here, come on. They gate, they've decided to gatekeep God's gift. Unbelievable. And so I've got the keys for it and where I'm at right now, and I've had the conversation with the main stakeholder, I was like, well, you know, I could be taking this person to court over this one here. I might have to sue them. And they're like, well, don't do it sort of thing. And like, cause I'm looking at the bigger picture because like, I'm not, I, yeah. How many of you Christian people out there have had to suffer walking away? And that's what this whole thing's all about because I was like, is it time to walk away again? And I was like, well, I'm not going to because I really love who I'm working for. And, um, sorry, for, working with. I really love who I'm working with. And um, it's, my exact idiosyncrasy and I'm happy I have fulfillment but the problem is there's this one individual and look it's a King Saul da King da uh, David scenario fortunately right? and unfortunately they're getting dethroned as we speak but I need you to understand things from a much larger perspective so um, they kept making finically 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 uh, perfectionist demands on everything that I was doing and I kept getting it precise and then they try and make another demand and I get it precise and another demand and I get it precise I think it was like it was Abraham Isaac yeah Isaac when um was it Isaac or Jacob <sighs> where that farmer that he was working for that he had to work all those years to get his Rebecca whichever one it was um he'd make a demand and God would make sure it had happened it was one of those scenarios and it was really pissing this one off. And uh, anyway, um, look, if it was a cricket match, I was 450 runs in, a fantastic innings, just wasn't getting out. And um, I made one mistake that I didn't even know was a mistake until they boarded up. 
And with that, they wanted to lord that mistake over me, and that's where all this started. And it was one little problem, and I was like, so there's something going on here, and that's where I started. Everything started to unravel, and like, um, turns out for these covert narcissists, just narcissists in general, um, they're pointing the finger and judging to keep the attention off them because once you have a look at their performance, they're actually pretty crooked. Anyway, we don't want to go into that now. So anyway, um, this mistake, um, because they're trying to be acting perfectionist, like a perfectionist towards me, they thought, oh, he's out now, he's got the sack or he's not here anymore. And I was like, well, no. Um, I won't be going anywhere because the key stakeholder and their guardian. <laughs> I made a mistake. Oof. 450 runs in, they're just like, get back out there, fix it. You know, like I have transparently dealt with all of my mistakes with this key stakeholder, and they're lovingly happy with the fact that I'm so open with them about everything. Now, in regards to this scenario, because it was to do with a job that I made a mistake on, I, I used a wire that was too thick and I didn't strain something tight enough. It was like on a, it's called a containment yard, it's not a fence. Anyway, um, so for me, look, did it strike a wound? Look, it did in one sense because there was the rejection thing there because they threw us under the bus. They were looking for something to hold over the top of me to go, oh, no, no, you're not perfect. You know, that, you know, that, that competitive garbage, la ha, you, you failed. And anyway, so for me, I don't know, it fell right into my strength-based issue and I was like, oh, you're calling me weak, are you? So what they didn't bank on was um, I single-handedly moved a 500 kilo, 100 horsepower pump through a forest and down cliff faces and put it into a river, a three and a half thousand litre a minute pump um, by myself last year. And um, with that, I figured out ways to tension cables that allow me to make cables that tight that I can de-stump trees if I want to. So, where they thought they were holding one over me, they didn't realize that I was going to find a resolution. And so I didn't just go and find the right part to get the job fixed. Turns out because I know how to make things really tight, I broke that part and through breaking it, it allowed me to find something that the industry hadn't yet found to make the part better than what it was already, than what it already was. So, um, Everything was just turning into win, 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 win. Um, in regards to this, it, it's this strainer that I found um, to tighten it into place. So you know, using threads, but the threads had handles on them, and um, I was getting the wires that tight that I sheared the threads, and so I had to like make a new component up to go to with the thing that I purchased. And um, where they were having troubles is that the bolts, oh sorry, the nuts that they were using to tighten in on the bolts with having handles on them, they were getting caught in the wires. Anyway, so with the new component I made up, I just need to use my impact driver now. My half inch impact driver just with the socket, on, off, done. Just, yeah, we're talking, without knowing it, because I was thrown under the bus, I've had a revolutionary idea that's actually, you know, it could project, it could excel an industry forward again. But that's for me, it is what it is. Anyway, so I didn't just fix the problem, I then went over and beyond and made the thing perfect. Now the problem is, whilst they were holding something over my head because they thought that somehow I wasn't gonna recover from a simple mistake, they went and ran my name around town, down around town. And um, they also wanted to gatekeep the next job that I was going to get, but then also went to the suppliers and all the rest of it and they stopped the work that I was doing. And I was like, hang on, no, no, no it's the main, the, the key stakeholder that uh, has given me this. And so now the problem is, um, they're blocking God's blessing. And so either, I, and so this is like where I've got to the point where I'm like, so 
I'm guarding the fact that God's blessed me with something because it's like, well, it's God's gift to me. I have to look after it. So first of all, I was like, well, I can fight for this. But then I was like, you know what? Look, I'll just stand back. And then so you're going back and forth through it, back and forth through it. And it's like, well, so what's actually happened now is they've got karma, a karma that's going to be a lot heavier than the price of what it would cost for me to take them to court to actually recuperate the losses from the gift that God gave us for my livelihood. So, you know, word to the, a word from the wise as a warning to anyone that wants to try and gatekeep the blessings of others. You just want to be careful that your karma is not more severe than the price that the other was going to get paid to be able to do what the Lord blessed them to do. All right. Anyway, back to it. So, defamation of character. Um, the key stakeholder was a little bit like, oh, just leave it alone for now. We've got plenty of other things to do. And there, there are plenty of other things to do. I've had, um, I'll be finding this out tomorrow, but I've had keys to another block of land handed over to us. So it doesn't bother me. You know, wherever th something fails that is a blessing of God, it'll typically come back tenfold. So like just, you know, I'm glad it failed, but I'm sort of, it's unfortunate for the individual the way they carried on because now they've got karma that they just, it's going to be too heavy for them to cope with. Anyway, back to it. So I didn't just resolve the problem. So, you know, my, my head's held high. I fixed it, but we're going back to the original issue. Why did they do what they did? Because I've got someone that's intelligent enough to understand. Um, and we're going through it and trying to look back and it's like, so is it just meant to, is it the real mentality? It's like, well, no, it's not that. And then it was only after going through it last week and after I left the conversation, because we still didn't get it right, the Holy Spirit dropped it in and it was just like, it's territorial pissings. And I was like, and then I looked at it and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, like, um, what had happened had nothing to do with reason or logic. Uh, when territorial pissing comes in, it's when someone feels threatened and through a knee-jerk reaction, they will bite you or attack you to say, back off, because they are feeling like the land that they are standing on, they are threatened and they may lose what it is that they've got, right? But the bigger issue here that we've got to look at with it, because I was trying to go, well, so beyond territorial pissing, so they're actually saying this is my territory, and I was like, so they don't own it, but they've claimed it, they've pissed on it. And I was like, well, look, if we want to play those games... I'll claim the key stakeholder and piss on them. We don't want to play those games though, because that's the reason why the whole point to why I'm putting this to video together for you is this. The devil is trying to get you into dog eat dog territorial pissings. Don't fall for it. Your greatest gift is how you can mop the floor with dog eat dog and territorial pissings because by very our very nature, the Holy Spirit has made us alpha wolves. We are the Alpha, but we're not territorial because we are submitted guardians of the Royal Guard. You know, we, we're here to serve God, so we're not territorial. And these guys, they're just threatened that we are a powerhouse and then we've come into their territory and they are feeling out of, their nose has been out of joint and they're trying to find ways to get rid of us. So they thought by that simple little mistake that I made that it was going to get rid of us, they didn't realise that the Holy Spirit was definitely going to make sure that I not just... um you know, fixed it, but went over and beyond and made it better. Um, but you're looking at the core fundamental of what's really going on with it, because first of all, don't fall into dog eat dog. Don't lower yourself to their level. That's there it is. So with don't lower it to you, yourself to that level. <sighs> this whole territorial pissings are it's like, oh, who's the top dog? So first of all, that's going to be a toe to the line boxing match and one's going to come out the winner. If they want to go down that line, so be it. You know, you want to know what hurts more than a fist? Emotions. Just, just, you don't want to have the fight, but if it has to get to it, a fight's a lot better than beating yourself up emotionally and dealing with shame. You know what I'm trying to get at? The Lord has turned us into lethal weapons. But because we learnt how to become that in order to protect ourselves because our entire objective was self-defense we have learnt to see every target on a person and they're just a wide open target for us to just you know pull apart it is frightening what we could do to someone because we are lethal and we wouldn't do anything but the holy spirit has trained us to become 
masters of what we are. And we only do it for self-defense because we are here to serve and protect. So with the serve and protect, we're dealing with the harassing, narcissistic, you know, biters, the ones that want to come out, start the fight, that garbage. Right? So in regards to all that, because we're try getting, trying to get closer and closer and closer, I'm looking at it because like I've gone through a crucifixion over the last six months. I've nearly bled out four times. I was doing barbed wire fencing in four foot tall grass. I was walking in one foot deep water. It was not exactly the greatest experience anyone's had because it was after floods. Kilometers of it, it was really uh, sickness, all the other stuff that you had to deal with. It wasn't a great experience, but you know, I did it, I did it, I did it. And it was like, nothing was gonna stop us. I was like a freight train. I was like, oh, next, what's next, what's next, what's next? The jobs that were being handed to me is what this individual was using to try and stop me in my tracks because they didn't want us here anymore. They wanted to get rid of me. And God used that to build me up. So don't be surprised if what someone is using to get rid of you is what God is using to develop you. Because the problem that everyone's got now, whether they wanted to get rid of me or not, is I have all the gear. And if I was to leave, the entire operation falls apart now. Isn't that terrible? Back to it. So, um... We want to get back to the nitty gritty of it just so you grab it because we're going, it's like, a, you know, we're pulling the thread out or unraveling it. So I was looking at it and I was like, what is the real issue here? Um, they wanted to throw us under the bus. They wanted to, you know, defamation of character. They wanted to um, ignore us. You know, they wanted to like look down their nose at us. They wanted to like posh all that other garbage. Um, but what's the greater issue with all of it? I hate this. Because when you are a gentleman and you're speaking to a lady, see, ladies and gentlemen, we just don't even see this. I had to see it. Once you see territorial pissings, it's called dog acts. Did you know that there are people that get joy from seeing others suffer? You got psychopaths and you got sadists, you got masochists, you got schizoids, you know. Uh, look, I don't want to get into like, you know, bottom feeders and whales and sharks and dolphins and the way that the, uh, you know, the ocean's jungle works, if we want to talk about the laws of the jungle, but we're going back to the laws of the jungle now. Did you know that there are people that get a thrill out of watching others suffer by deliberately sabotaging them? It's interesting, isn't it? I want to let that sink in one more time. They're called sore fucking losers. And um, what these things that they're doing, they're called stumbling blocks. I just need to do this entire video to show you what a stumbling block is. So a stumbling block is typically from someone who is acting territorial, which is dog eat dog. They're trying to act like top dog. And in order to try and gain some form of control over you, they will place a stumbling block underneath you, which is something that's going to hurt you that they deliberately place there in order to cause you to fall so they can somehow try to get you out of the way. Unfortunately, they didn't expect that I had the relationships that I do and they didn't expect for the communication to be so transparent. So where we're at right now is um, not only is there no problem because I have fixed my issue, but now because I've chosen to surrender um, all this stuff over to God, the karma they've got to pay is going to be a lot heavier than the financial cost would have been for them to go to court to repay for the fact that they got into the way of something that was rightfully mine by God. So, look, we're just about ready to wrap this one up now. Um, for anyone who's within revengeful thinking, where are we at with this? Life owes you nothing. This whole winners and losers garbage is 3D. Um, life owes you nothing. Your win or your loss is simply a response to your actions. And as you become more intelligent to your actions, you'll recognize that you'll find more wins in life than losses. Life, as much as it is a flip of a coin, no. That winners and losers flipping of a coin comes down to the response to the actions that you have taken. As you become more intelligent to your approaches and responses, you will get more wins than losses. And as you start to understand strategies, if we want to get back into the trading market now, even if it is yes and no, up and down or straight, 
And once you start to get strategies, you'll start to realize that you can tip the odds of most things into your favor because everything has strategies that can send the weight of something in one direction or the other. It's our job to problem solve things and figure that shit out. Anyway, so is it my problem that they couldn't get out of their own way? They're their own stumbling block and they were trying to be my stumbling block blue. No, it's not my problem because now we're coming back to, look, it's the Jezebel spirit, it's selfishness, it's jealousy, it's greed, it's manipulation. And it's only desire is to be the center of attention. So when someone's been the center of attention, the fat, dumb and happy top dog where, you know, it's like in South Park, Mimsy, you know, you've got your little Don bloke that's trying to, you know, act like top dog. And then someone's come along, like myself, who the Lord has built up and just mopped the fucking floor with everything and their nose is out of joint. What's the bigger issue here? Learning difficulties. They couldn't pull their finger out of their ass and accept they needed to learn something else, which was called read a book or watch a fucking video and actually do what it took to figure out the next step. They're comfortable within their own little reality. They don't want expansion. And in order to not get the expansion, they'll knock everyone down so they can keep their comfort zone. Listen here, my friends. It's your job to destroy the comfort zone because it's time for the next step. And the next step sits within integrity. This control bullshit, where those who are trying to hold on to it, that's why we are here, to destroy that control by pissing excellence and with valor and integrity. Anyway, so... <clears throat> Stumbling blocks come from people who will deliberately put something in your way in order to trip you up so that you it will force you into a situation where you may choose to quit. They will use plausible deniability, but if you can establish a healthy communication with the powers that be, you can let them know these things and understand these things because if they're a power that t is to be or is, they should be intelligent enough to understand these things where if they're not, long and short of it is, God will get you to usurp them and you'll be in charge of the lot because what God is after is leaders to guard his assets. Anyway, so... Um, that was a really long talk. This is a survival guide for anyone that's being knocked about by territorial pissing. This is to help you understand what the enemy is doing, what the devil is getting people who are your enemies to do. He is forcing them to act like animals. The animal, the instinct-based not thinking, you know, it's monkey brain. You know, it's like, it's unaware, lack of conscience, and it's 2D essentially. It's yes, no. Take, get here. There's no objective reasoning in it. We want to go to the 5D. They are trying to, so the enemy is trying to get your enemies. You bet you want to bet you've got them. I didn't know that I had them and they are there and they are trying to sink you. And whilst ever you are naive and oblivious to it, you will be sunk. That's why you're struggling right now. You are going to be pissed off the fact that you've got them, but you'll be a lot happier to know that they're there to then do the research and learn about narcissism and learn about all that other garbage that you're going to have to understand in order to be able to put the fucking personal boundaries in place and start to live life happy anyway so let's let's regroup let's re recap this so we talked about revengeful thinking we talked about winners and losers we talked about life owes us nothing whether we win or lose is simply a response to our actions so it then shows that we can become a master of life that's where you get the masters we find mastering we understand that we've got enemies and with our enemies we understand that some enemies get some you know I'm saying like some sadistic joy out of throwing stumbling blocks under your feet to trip you up whilst you're walking on a tightrope. Right. Now, the only thing that we haven't covered in regards to what they're throwing underneath your feet, what validation do they get out of it if we want to unravel it completely? So if we're having a look at the validation, so they've thrown a stumbling block under your feet and they've thrown you under a bus, they've defamed your character, they've spread rumors about you, um, they're on the run. They're telling themselves a story. Unfortunately, you've fixed the problem. So you've sent the arrow string back at them and it's going to bowl them over. But what story are they running with for the stumbling block? 
Well, let's go back to territorial pissings, control, winners and losers. You're a threat, so they're in competition with you. You may not be with them, but they are with you, and that's something that we all struggle to comprehend. So someone's in competition with another, there can only be winners or losers, and if they are to lose, to lose for them is death. So, um, how can I say this? What are they running away from? Why are they throwing the stumbling blocks? Even though the stumbling block itself will cause the same dilemma for them spiritually that they don't want to experience physically. You ready for the compassion now? Because it's about winners and losers and they don't know how to lose because they are sore losers, they are running away from losing at all costs because they don't want to fall into a state of condemnation. Do you remember all the way back into the beginning of this when I was walking down that fence line out in the sunshine, I said to you, there is no condemnation in Christ? Hmm. So, their belief system is shot. And where we understand there to be no condemnation in Christ, so, you know, God paid that price, they, unfortunately, because they have not submitted to God, are fighting with all their might where their beliefs are that like um, if you lose you're dead so they're doing everything within their power to trip you up because you know we're going back to materialism and all the rest of it there is no conscience about winning it is just you have to win no matter the cost so if you can see that you have to win no matter the cost you can see the justifications and the reasonings being that if they were to lose, they would then have to go through the self-condemnation, which is worse than a loss. And they're running away from you know, shadow work. They're running away from something which will be inevitable at some point to have to deal with. Um, but that's not your problem. But it's, your, it's just our problem to understand that, you know... Um, I don't know how you, you can't get through to these individuals. That's why we have to learn to let them suffer. We have to get good at letting those guys suffer because, oh, there it is. We're getting back to it. We're getting back to it. Um, they have to learn the hard question that it's all right to ask for help. And um, it's all right to not always be correct. But the long and short of it is that's coming down to the stubbornness of pride. You know, it's pride before the fall. So they're already in a pride fall. Um, how do I say this one here? Yeah, pride before the fall, stubbornness. It's learning difficulties, but we already went through that ages ago. So it's all just coming back. So just, we are here to elevate the frequency and the consciousness of this planet. You are dealing with a large collective who have learning difficulties and in order to protect the fact that they don't like the shame that, you know. So ultimately it's a core wound. They don't like looking stupid. They don't like losing because losing makes them look stupid. See, for me, I just told you I had a core wound earlier about looking weak, I don't like it, and I can fix my weaknesses very quickly though, you know? So they're in a deflated situation where they don't want to look stupid or weak because the long and short of it is, what are they really struggling with? An inferiority complex. So it's a bit of a tough one to deal with. Now I think, you know, 50 minutes is enough. I said about 50 minutes, 40, 50 minutes. I'm going to leave you now. You've got enough juice to grab from this one here to walk into the next part of this, which is, Google it, maybe we can all come back and comment on this at some point, how to manage our interactions with those who are suffering with an inferiority complex. Without putting ourselves in, putting ourselves in their harm way and being able to stay objective and to be able to be in control and to be able to get on with what it is that we're doing and not have to worry about them ever again. Not crazy, huh? All that from territorial pissings. Cool. So maybe that's we're going from the beginning to the end. The end of the beginning. We're doing a Merlin job here. We're walking from the end back into the beginning. Territorial pissings. How to avoid an inferiority complex. May Jesus be with you. May the Holy Spirit teach you and guide you and love you. And may God bless you. Have an excellent day. Bye for now.